this is what we are going to 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 cover before before we we start doing anything especially like a microbial kinetics you need to understand what it is first okay so when we talk about kinetics okay there were sort of like two aspects into it okay what we do is we do the experimental study of the dynamic of the microbial life okay that is one thing so that means that you probably have to do fermentation and see how things change okay the second part is the analysis of the underlying mechanism is to understand what actually govern or control the um, 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 whatever the cells does and that is through the use of mathematical models okay so i often say that it looks very difficult but with the technology now mathematical modeling is not difficult and you don't have to be alarmed because we are not going to do modeling in this course <laughs> okay all we are going to do is just to introduce you the the idea and if you are interested in this topic, there is still more to do. Okay, and this is the class agenda for this topic. Um, in the two lecture, we are going to divide the lecture into two parts. Okay, for today, we are going to cover the part on cells kinetics. And next lecture, we are going to talk about the mode of cells cultivation. So for this lecture, uh, I'm going to introduce you the basics of the cell's kinetics. And let's see when we are talking about kinetics, what actually involves okay, with, the, with, the, with the cell's kinetics. Um, when we talk about the cells and the growth of the cells and how the cells perform in terms of kinetic. We are interested in their life cycles, what happened to them and what actually affect their growth. Okay. Um, given the time that we have, I probably cannot go through much of this part, but I'm going to spend a lot of time in what happened during the cells growth. Okay. When we are talking about cells growth, the kinetic of the cells, we are interested in mainly three things. The first three things is to see how they grow, okay? How they take the substrate and what to do with the substrate. And then whether they produce anything and how they produce things, okay? And Generally, when we talk about cells life cycle, the important part of the cells growth is the use of substrate. It's just like we are, we have to eat, okay? We have to eat the food for, for us to do things, okay? But other things which could affect the growth of the cells as well, which we probably don't have time to go through all of them, are the environmental factors. These are, say, something like a pH, like oxygen, or like temperature. These are the things that affect the cells as well. So in terms of microbial kinetics, uh, we mainly interested in how the substrate affect the growth and the product. But with the, kin the full things about kinetic could involve the mathematical modeling that uh, put the pH, oxygen, and temperature in as well. So it actually depends on how you are interested in assessing the, the cell's kinetics. Okay, up to this point, it seems <laughs> a lot to do, right? And we have to wrap this up in about one hour. That's okay. Okay, let's start. When we talk about kinetics, okay, in engineering, there were two terms, kinetic and 
um, uh, that was static and dynamic, sorry. Kinetics is something to do with the reaction. And when we talk kinetic, we talk about the rate, okay? And I hope everyone remembers that the rate is actually the change in amount of something per unit of time. So it's like when you drive a car, how fast you, grow, you go is like kilometer per hour. That is the rate. So you have some amount and time. So when we are talking cells kinetic, we are talking about the changes in, in those three things that we are interested in, like biomass, how they change, substrate, how they change, and the product, how they change, okay? And kinetic parameters, like the calculation of yields, um, productivities, and those type of things are just a part of a kinetic study. Because if you look back into the first slide, you see that kinetic is about understanding how the cell change and trying to um, using like mathematical models to understand, okay? What we are going to touch is the basic stuff that, um, uh, that govern those change. Okay, let us start with the first one, which is the kinetic of the cell's growth. The cell's growth kinetics, just like I said before, kinetic is about the change. So it's actually talk about how fast the cells grow and what actually control the growth, okay? And mathematically, cells growth kinetic is explained using this equation. This is the rate of change of cells growth. And what governs this is this term. I'm not very sure whether you have come across this, which is a specific growth rate, okay? So if you're looking at this, if you are looking at this, um, hold on, if you are looking at uh, this, this equation, okay? If you're looking at this equation, you see that the change depends on what mu is and how much the cells is as well, okay? And looking at this stuff, you will see that mu is not always a constant. This value is not always a constant. Okay, they changes with time and depend on what control the growth and the mechanism of the cells. Okay, now, uh, with the equations of the cells growth, to understand how these terms change, we have to understand how, this thing, how the mu behave. Okay. So this is what we have. Okay, now we have, I have these two graphs that shows you they are plot with the same data. Okay, they are plot with the same data. Just want you to see how are these two graphs different. Can anyone take a look and tell me how they are different? Anyone with your hands up? It's okay. Of course, the shape is different, but what what actually make the shape of the graph different? Because they are using the same set of data, exactly the same set of data, but with different shape. Anyone want to have a try? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, you have to tell me if I'm going too fast or if there's anything you are not clear about. 
my, my, my speak. Okay. These two graphs differ on the y-axis. Okay. This graph differ on the y-axis. The, the graph on the left-hand side is the plot between a concentration and time. Okay. And the graph on the right-hand side is the log of the cell concentration and time. So basically the different plot will give you a different shape and it a different way to explain how the cells change, okay? If you remember the basic graph theory, you'll see that with this plot, the slope, which is delta y by delta x, and your delta y is the change in cell concentration and the change in time, you will see that this is great. So it's dx dt, okay? Delta y and delta x on the right-hand side will also give you something, but it's not going to be dx dt. So from this graph, I want you to understand that we are going to explain how dx dt and how this, this graph have this shape, which is dx dt, but this one will not be dx dt. You need to understand that. But this one has a specific name, okay? If you plot the cell concentration and time, what you have is you have a growth profile. But on the right-hand side, what you have, you have a growth curve. We are going to see how they are different, okay? Before we go to that, Maybe I would like to talk a little bit about how the specific growth rate change with cultivation times. From this slide, you see that the rate change, right? Throughout, throughout the fermentation time because the slope start here, then increase, then increase, then increase, then decrease, and then stable. That is the slope, okay? The slope on this growth curve changes as well. So that means that over the fermentation period, the growth rate of the cells change. So does the mu. The mu will change as well. This is the basic, um, sort of like basic, but it is something that every biotech student has to understand, okay? Is how the specific growth rate change with the cultivation time. And in the basic, the most basic analysis, I hope that you remember your um, basic integration. From this point to this point, okay? And if you take the integration, take the x on the same side, mu to dt, you integrate that from initial to final x and from time zero to time t. And if you assume that mu is a constant, of course you can take the mu to the front of the integration and then you integrate this and this is what you get, okay? And when you rearrange things, this is the equations that you get. Okay, so if you compare this equation, this is the same equation as uh, the one below, log x is equal to y in the linear, the linear curve. Okay, this is the, the linear equation and mu t is mx. So basically, that means if you plot log x 
versus time. Your slope will be mu. If mu is constant only, okay? If mu is constant, what do you get from from this um uh, from this derivation of of the mu is explained here. Okay. This plot is the growth curve, like I told you before. It's not a growth profile. Growth profile just tells you the concentration and time. So in growth curve and in the derivation of this equation, you see that if mu is constant and then you plot log x and t, you will get this part of the growth curve. Okay. This part of the growth curve is when mu is constant and it is at its maximum. Okay. Now, that means that if you plot a growth curve, which is the semi-log plot, a slope of this plot would be your specific growth rate, which is the mu. Okay, the specific growth rate is the mu. So the slope equal to mu. Okay, but if you if you remember, if you plot just x and t, and make that the slope is dx by dt. They are not the same, okay? So this one slope is mu. And the uh, growth curve that you see here is a typical growth curve. When I say typical, that means that uh, the it presents whatever happened when there is nothing else affecting the growth except the food, okay, <laughs> except the food. So the main, the main part of the growth curve consisting of four main parts in typical growth curve, okay. The first part is what we call a lag phase, okay. You see that with the lag phase, the specific growth rate is about zero. It's approximately zero. So that means there's no change in sales growth. So basically, if you are cultivate a cell, and if your cell is a typical, typical, um, typical type, you start by inoculating the cells into, into your, your fermentation. It is possible that the cells has to adapt to something, to the new environment, and it, it divided itself very slowly. That's when you have the lag phase. The mu equals to, is about zero, okay? But after a while, when the cell start adapting itself, it start to grow faster. In some textbook, this part of the curve is called the acceleration phase, accelerating, increasing in 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 speed. Okay. And after it gets so familiar with the um, with the environment, it start to grow. And this is what we call a log phase or the exponential phase or a growth phase. That is when mu is maximum, which is the mu max. And this mu max, of course, is a constant. That is why we can do something like this in this slide. That's why we can take mu out of the out of the integral symbol. Okay. And when the cell continue growing, and at some point, 
it has to stop, right? <laughs> because in a fermentation, when you have cell and you have substrate, the cell is the substrate, the substrate deplete, then the cell has to stop somehow because there's no substrate left. Okay. This part of the curve sometimes called deceleration phase. So it starts decreasing for the speed. Okay. After a while, it will enter a stationary phase. This is another phase where mu equals to zero, similar to life phase. But life phase, mu is about zero because it starts adapting itself to the environment. But in the stationary phase, mu is about zero because there's nothing left for it to eat. So they can't grow any further. Okay. The last phase is death phase. We most of the fermentation studies or the kinetic study doesn't really um, do much on the death phase, except that you want to you want to study the death mechanism of the cells or the death kinetic of the cells. Okay. So most of the study will will stop at a stationary phase. Okay. And with the death phase, mu is less than zero. So that means that mu is negative, which is understandable because the slope is negative. All right, that is what um, a general growth curve looks like. Okay. Now, up to this point, anyone has any questions or wants me to um, explain some more thing? You can raise your hand and ask question, or if I go too fast, or if I, if you want me to slow down a little bit, you can. Okay. Anyone? You can raise up your hand and then walk up to the mic, or you get your friend to hand the mic over to you. Okay. So. Now, let's see this again, okay? Um, this is two different situations. What I'm um, showing you here is to show you a typical growth curve that I just taught earlier in the previous slide and an experimental growth curve. This growth curve is actually from from my research, it is the growth curve that I get from the fermentation of a yeast in glycerol media. Okay. So it is a plot of a similar thing. It's just a plot of log cells versus time and also a log cells versus time. You see that for the typical growth curve, you will get a lag phase here. You get a log phase here where the mu max is maximum and it's a constant. Then you have a um, stationary phase here and then you have a death phase here. Okay. Anyway, I have to tell you that is in real life, it's very difficult to find a typical growth curve of the cell of any type. However, this is more of what you will see. In the um, the actual in the actual fermentation, this is most likely what you get. Is that you get a growth phase straight away. You see that um, this plot you have uh, the slope of this plot is the mu, right? Is the mu. So it actually changes over time and get decreasing all the time. Um, okay, with this graph, you see that you can't see any lag phase at all. The cell actually start with an exponential phase and then get decreasing. They have a very long deceleration phase before it reach a stationary phase. So that means that in 
in the real experiment of your fermentation, you are unlikely to get a typical growth curve. Okay, the, you, it's very rare that you get a lab phase unless um, your inoculum uh, are transferred into a media that actually are so different from, from what they are used to before. That's when you start getting a lab phase. But most of the time, um, in my experience, it's, it's, it's very rare <laughs> that you get a lab phase, like a clear lab phase. You probably get a little bit of lab phase, but that's it. Okay. So that is the difference between a typical growth curve and an experimental growth curve. So that goes to, to one question that we took before, is that the growth curve doesn't have to contain like the full main phase of the growth always. Okay, most of the most of the phase that disappear is the is the lag phase. Okay, now let's see if specific growth rate is that important. Um, how are we going to determine it? Okay, for specific growth rate, okay, let me write down the equation so you know where we are, ux, okay? So that is the specific growth rate that we are talking about. We can see it in two ways, okay? You can determine mu as a numeric values or you can see me as a mathematical terms, okay? So in an experiment, you can calculate the numeric values of the mu, but it's not going to tell you about the mechanism that underlie how the growth rate change. It just gives you a number for the 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 actual time at a given time okay and it can be determined from experimental data you can calculate it okay but for the mathematical terms the mu in mathematical term is an attempt to identify the effect of the factor on the mu values so the mathematical terms will tell you what actually affect the mu, how it makes the mu change, okay? And this is what involved the fitting of the kinetic equation to the experimental data to see if the explanation is correct. We are going to cover this toward the end of this lecture. I'm not going to get you to do it, but you know, probably need to understand what's going on, okay? So for your uh, for undergrad level, I would expect that you understand how how you determine the numeric values of the mu, okay? And these numeric values of the mu is determined at one given time. So we sometimes call them an instantaneous mu, the mu at that time, okay? And with the specific growth rate. There are three ways we can do it. We can find mu and explain it or determine from a doubling time using a graph or calculate from the data. Okay. Um, just a brief look at what each of these are. Doubling time is the time taken for the cells to increase twice in number. So that means you start from one cell, it's split into two cells. The time that it takes to doubling in numbers is called a doubling time. Okay. You use this when there was data on changes in number of cells over time. And uh, for your level, I think you should understand that this is easily used when you have like cell counts. You have 
number of cells and you know how they doubling. Okay. The next one, the graphical method and the calculation from the data is 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 basically the use of a basic calculation of the numbers. For the graphical method, it's determined when you have um, a slope of the growth curve, like what you see before, the semi-log plot, or you can calculate it from a growth profile. So basically for the growth curve, where you have log x on t, the slope is definitely mu. But if you have x on t, which is a growth profile, the way you calculate mu will be different, okay? And also, you can calculate it from the data. Now, let, let us see first. The first way that we determine the mu is from the doubling time, okay? So since the doubling time is the time taken for the cells to double in number, and of course, we start from the definition dx dt equal to mu x, and following um, the basic calculus thing, you'll get this equation. Okay, and with this equation, you rearrange and you get this term. And since this is a, uh, it is a doubling time, x will have to be double of the x zero. Okay. And that time taken is a doubling time. So if you know a doubling time, you can calculate mu. Or if you know mu, you can calculate a doubling time. But this is, okay. One thing you need to understand is that you can achieve this equation only when mu is a constant. So the doubling time is the time at one point. Okay, it's the time at one point. So single value it is. If you look back at this graph, okay, the doubling time here will be different from doubling time here. The doubling time here is the same, the same, the same. And it will change here again, it will change here, it will change here. So so basically it, it changes over um, over the, the fermentation. Okay. The next method is a graphical method. Um, for the graphical method, if we're looking at the growth curve, all of you should know now that for the growth curve, which is the plot of the semi-log and time, a slope is, is the mu by itself. Okay, so what I, what I show you here is um, the basic slope finding. Of, of the curve and since mu is a number at a certain time it is the slope of one point i hope that you are, uh, remember how to find the slope of, of one point if you have like just to quick review if you have a point here and you want to find the slope of that point, okay, what you have to do is draw a line, right? Draw a line to that point, and that line has to make like an equal angle, and then you read the x values and the y values. Um, sorry. You read x values and the y values. Um, a similar thing, um, a similar thing appear for the growth profile, the finding of the mean from the growth profile. In the growth profile case, it's different. The slope itself is not a mu. 
okay? Because if you recall, ah, oh, sorry, different, wrong pen. Okay, if you recall, dx dt equal to mu x, and with the graph, uh, with the linear graph, this dx dt is a slope. So that means that the slope is mu x. What it means is that if you want to find a mu, it has to be 1 on x times the slope. Okay, so at one given time, you have to have a slope and also the x. Let me show you this example, this point, the green point here. So if you want to find the instantaneous mu at this point, you have to find the slope that go to this point. Okay, so the slope is is that and you have to divide it by this x that you break. That is using the definition of 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 the um, of of the cells kinetic itself to find the values of the mu. Okay. So it's a little bit different and you have to remember that this is the instantaneous mu. Okay. Okay, the last method to find the numeric values of the mu is calculation from the data. And the calculation from the data is pretty straightforward. The point is, it's very similar to the graph. But the thing is, if you are not plotting a graph, what you can do is you can find, is you can find, um, not really find, you can estimate the slope. Um, the examples that I give here in this slide is to find the mu values at 16 hours. Okay, so it's just like you have these three points. If you want to find the slope of this point, you can estimate it from the point between the, the point before and the point after, basically. It's just an estimation, okay? So that's why when you get the slope, you use these two values here, okay? To get an estimation of slope, but you have to divide it by the x of the point that you want to find the mu. So in this case, what it says is that at fermentation time of 16 hour, the instantaneous mu is 0 0.082 per hour. So if you do this, it will change over time. And with this way, if you want to find a mu max, you can do it for like 0 hour, 4 hour, 8 hour, 12 hour, 16 hour, and to see which one would give you an estimation of the mu max. Remember, this is just an estimation, okay? This is just an estimation. Okay. So that is for determination of the specific growth rate as a numeric values. Anyone want to ask any question at this point? Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's move to a mathematical term for explaining mu. This is the real point for the kinetic, the kinetic studies. Okay. We are going to only touch the idea of, of, of this topic. Okay. Um, So expression of mu explain mechanism of cell growth. So from the basic equation, which is d 
dx equal to mu x. The mathematical term that explaining mu will tell you what actually controls how dx dt change. If you read like research paper about kinetic studies and doing mathematical modeling, you are likely to see a similar type of stuff here. The simplest form of mu is the Monod equation type. Okay. And this Monod equation type is very similar to what we call Nicholas Menten type of equation for the enzyme. Um, any of you guys unheard of enzyme kinetics? So I assume that every one of you does, right? <laughs> okay. In monod type of equation, mu is only controlled by the concentration of a substrate. If you look at this equation, okay, if you look at this monod equation, what you see is that If you have high S, like your S substrate is very high, what do you think your mu will go to? Like mathematically, if S is very, very high, what do you think happens? Like S is much higher than KS, what do you think happens? Okay, let me show you, okay? <laughs> so if S is much higher than KS, that means that this term here is very similar to that term. So it can cancel out and it makes your mu equal to mu max. Okay? On the other hand, if your S is very small, much smaller than KS, much smaller than KS. So that means that this term will become mu equal to mu max. S over KS, okay, approximately that way. So the difference between these two is that if you have a high substrate, your cell grow fast because your mu equal to mu max. But if you have low substrate, the lower your substrate is, the lower your mu is. So that means that if you have less substrate, your cells will grow much smaller. So this is the basic stuff from, from the point of view of a basic, um, a basic kinetics. So if you have uh, more substrate, you grow fast. If you have less substrate, you, don't, you, you grow slow. And if the substrate becomes zero, definitely there's no growth, which is the XTT is zero. So this is the, so the monod equation is actually what we call here is a substrate limitation. Okay. It's called substrate limitation. So that means that the growth go, um, you have faster growth, then you have more substrate. When you have less substrate, that's limited growth because the substrate is limited. However, this is not always true for all the cells, okay? 
the mu can be explained in many other forms. Okay. I'm not going to go into too much details on this, but uh, looking at this one as an example, this term is similar to is the monad equation. So the x dt is controlled by a substrate limitation. But it also, in this case, it also controlled by a substrate inhibition as well. If you look at this term, if S is very high, okay, if S is very high, this term becomes Kix over S, and S is high, this term is getting smaller and smaller, and it makes your dxdt smaller as well. So this thing is called a substrate inhibition, okay? And this is just a term that explains substrate inhibition. There are also other terms that is used to explain substrate inhibition as well, for example, like this term. The last term here, as you see, that the growth rate here is also controlled by how much product is produced. Okay, the higher the product, the higher the product, the smaller this whole term is, and also the smaller the XDT or the growth rate would be. So this is how um, the mathematical term is used to explaining the mu. So, so basically it's not just higher substrate, faster growth, low, um, smaller substrate going slower. It's not always like that. You see that there are also other things that affect the growth of the cells as well. Okay. Um, with this type of explanation, um, if you fit this, this equation into your experiment, and if it fits well, so that means that your model is correct. Okay, so we are going to talk about that in the last slide. Okay. Now let's move on to a kinetic of substrate consumption. And it will be very similar and it's connected to a product formation as well. Okay. Um, the substrate consumption kinetics term is very similar to the growth kinetics term as well. So what we want to see is to see how fast the cells take a substrate and what controls it. Just like the way we, we do for the cells kinetics. So the substrate consumption rate or substrate consumption kinetics is DSDT this term equal to minus qs and x. This minus is there because the substrate has to be used. Okay, over time the substrate has to decrease, so the change has to be negative. Okay, a lot of people forgot this negative stuff. The QS term is similar to what mu is, okay? In the cell growth, we have the XTT equal to mu X. So QS and mu X do a similar thing. We call this small QS a specific substrate consumption rate. This is a specific growth rate. This is a specific substrate consumption rate, okay? And also it has to times by the cells concentration as well. So basically, everything has the same principles that applied in the cell growth kinetic, including all the um, calculations as well. Okay, just like the cell kinetic, we can be, um, we, we, I mean, it can be interested looking at in two ways. Okay, one way is numeric values of QS, another way is the mathematical, uh, mathematical terms that explain the QS. 
for the numeric values of QS, we are doing a very, very similar thing to, to cell growth kinetics. Okay? But we are not having the doubling time and things like that, so we are left with the third thing, which is the graphical method and, and, and from the experimental data. And if you want to find QS, we rearrange this equation and then we get this equation. See that we get the QS. We have to find DSDT, whether it's from the slope or whether it's from, it's from the experimental values. Okay, and then we divide it by X. Okay, if we have a graph, Okay, we can find dx dt by a qs, sorry, we can find qs, of course, by finding the slope, and that slope is ds dt. In, uh, in these figures, I try to find the qs at three hours. So I know that the, um, the substrate is here. So I find the slope of the substrate at this point, okay? And you see that the way I find the slope is drawing a line through that point. Just make sure that the angle here and there is about equal. You find the slope at that point, and then you divide it by x, because by definition, it is something like that, right? And the x that you have to divide it is the x at the same time. Okay, which is that point there. That is um, finding the numerical values if you have a graph. Similarly, for similar to what we do for the mu, is calculating from the data. Okay. Um, similar principle apply. For example, this one is um, the QS at three, three hours. So we have to find the slope of the substrate first, and we took these two points, one before and one after, just an estimation. And then you divide it by the X, which is the x at the time that we want, okay? Um, at this point, uh, you should see that the, actually the, um, the slope method from the plot is a little bit more accurate, okay? It's a little bit more accurate than, than, the, than using the number by itself because if you're looking at um, this point, if you have experimental values for that point and that point, and you find that slope, it's a good chance that you have a different slope, a little bit different slope than using the graphical method by itself, but it's more convenient, okay? And it's good for the estimation as well. For example, if you want to find QS max, for example, you can use this method or you can or you can use that method and just find the maximum values of the QS. Now, coming about a mathematical term that explains QS, it's a little bit um, not really confusing, but it, it, it is a little bit complex, okay? To find a mathematical term for QS, which is used in this equation, dsdt, qs, and x. Find a mathematical term for qs, you need to understand how the substrate is used, okay? The substrate is used in three ways. Substrate is used in three ways. The first way the substrate is used is to produce energy that is used for growth and maintenance. Growth and maintenance always comes together, okay? 
actually the maintenance has to be there all the time, whether there's growth or not. Because sometimes you can see this, that the cell doesn't grow, but it uses substrate. That, that substrate is used to produce energy, and the cells use that energy for the maintenance. And this is with no product. The second way the, the substrate can be used is doing the same thing. They split some of it used for product and some of it used for producing um, energy for the growth and the maintenance of the cells. Okay, so in this case, the substrate, oh, sorry, in this case, the substrate is not splitting. The substrate actually goes producing energy, but as a part of producing energy, it also produces product. So the product is the, is, is the end or the intermediate pathway of the energy production, okay? And the third scenario is the substrate is split. Some part of substrate is used to produce energy and used for growth and maintenance. And another part, a totally different part, using to produce the product that it doesn't produce any energy for the sales growth. Now, how does this understanding in, in how the substrate is used affect the mathematical terms that explaining to us? Okay. Uh, we are going to cover only these um, two scenarios. Okay. This, the first scenario and the second scenario. The mathematical terms for QS when substrate is used for growth and no product formation, which is um, this root. So the rate of substrate use is used only for growth and maintenance. So the substrate is used for growth, which is the XDT, and the maintenance, which doesn't involve growth. See, the, X, the sales concentration is not the XDT. It doesn't change. Okay, so that, I mean, it changed with time, but it's not the rate of change. Okay, and you can uh, relate the XDT and the SDT by using the yield. Okay, if you go back and review this slide, you can look at the, um, look at the, the unit, you can look at the unit of the thing here, such as for the XDT, you know, it's probably could be like gram cells per hour, and you, the XDT is gram cells per gram substrate. Cancel this out, you get gram substrate per hour, which is the which is the unit for the SDT. You can do something like that to make sure that you understand why does the equation goes like, like this one. Okay. Um, and if you expand this one, this term, you get mu x and rearrange everything and and use the basic explanation for mu, this is what you get, okay? So what you need to, what you probably need to make yourself understand is that uh, these whole term things is the QS. And just like in, in growth rate, in, in, in mu, this is not the only expression for QS, okay? It can be many other things as well. Okay, for the case where the substrate used for growth and the product is a part of energy metabolism, which is the second case that I explained earlier, 
a similar thing apply because the substrate that is used is not especially used for the product formation is actually used to produce the the energy and as it produces energy it produces the product so the same equation as the previous slide apply okay this is this this type of substrate use is very common for biotechnology for example um ethanol production bioethanol production the substrate is used this way okay a little bit on the substrate that part is used for growth part is used for product formation the substrate used is used for a growth and maintenance which follows this parenthesis here okay and part of it used for product formation and that follows the thing here um, this product formation we are going to to see next you see that it had it um, have a different uh, a similar form of a similar form of um, equation okay you arrange the thing and you see that this is appeared so what you should be able to to tell at least for this one is that this involve growth this involve maintenance and this involve product formation that means that substrate is split for growth and split for product formation okay let us go through the product formation kinetic i'm going to go a little bit faster because the same principle apply here uh, i make a mistake here okay if you have a slide cross this negative out because product formation is not negative like um, substrate formation it is positive because if it is produced it increases over time okay the same thing the same thing you can do for the qp i'm sorry really sorry about all the negative things here okay just cross it out um you can do a similar things to what you do with the QS before, okay? So I'm not going to go through all of this, just that you need to understand that the slope will be positive because product is produced, so it increases over time. Okay. Those are for the numerical values of the QP, okay? Use the same technique as the QS. Okay. Okay, definitely this is the new slide. So this is QP. Okay. So understanding where the product comes from is important in developing QP, QT, E4, QP, and S because you need to know what explain the QP. So that means that you need to know where the product comes from. The first scenario that the products come from is from as a part of the ATP production. Okay, part of ATP production that is used for growth and the sales maintenance. Along the way, product is produced as an intermediate or end product of the energy production. Another source of where the product comes from is the substrate going to product straight away. It doesn't do anything else except used to make the product. That is common for secondary metabolite. So it doesn't involve anything, the substrate to product. The third part is the substrate is splitting for growth and maintenance and some of it used to produce product. So this is similar to number one and number three is similar to what we talked before about how the, how the substrate is used. Okay, 
sorry. So we are going to concentrate on on the product formation of of the first um, of the first case only. Okay. So when the product is the end product of energy metabolism, that means that it produces as as um, intermediate or the end product that produces energy. This is common for something like the ethanol production or lactic acid production. Okay. So the product form with growth in this case, and also it form without growth. Okay. So how the product is formed without growth is due to the maintenance. So think of it this way. When you um, in some case, especially like electric acid production, the cells, if you do an experiment, you see that the cells after a while, it will stop. But the substrate is not finished and is keep using until the end. And apparently you see the lactic acid increases with the substrate. So there were part that lactic acid is produced while the, the growth is stopped okay the point is that this happens because even though there is no growth the cells still need some maintenance and the only way it can produce energy for maintenance is by producing the product because the product is a part of that energy metabolism okay even though without growth. So with this type of, of, of QP, sorry, this is P, okay? With this type of P, you need to know, you need to understand that product is produced with growth and with no growth. You have to have X here because if there's no cells, there's no way to produce products, okay? Okay, and you follow the same the same pattern and the whole thing here is QP and with this mu you can expand like what we talked before about the specific growth rate. Okay. So just to wrap up, okay, just to wrap up. I want you to have a look at this example of what we do with the kinetic expression. Okay. Just to remind you a little bit that when we talk about kinetic, we talk about change. And when we talk about change, we talk about change in cell, change in substrate, change in product formation. And this term are new, these terms are QS, okay, it has to have a minus here, I'm sorry. And this term are QP. Okay, how complex it is, it depends on how your cells is controlled, what controls your cell, what substrate is used for, and where the products come from. Okay, so it depends on that. Um, what I'm going to show you here is that with this expression, you see that what controls the rate is the substrate and product, mainly. So that means that 
the product can have some effect on the sales as well. There's a possibility of 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 being that, okay? And like with so uh calculating the numerical values is one thing. Okay, you have a uh, several techniques to get a values of mu of QS and of QP. But to explain what actually controls the kinetics of the cells are the mathematical expression, something like this. Okay. And you might ask, how do I arrive? How do I get this expression? And how do I know it correctly explain the kinetic of, of my cell growth? The point is that you need to understand those basic things I talked about first, like what controls the growth, what substrate is used for, what product comes from, uh, where the product comes from, and what actually control those stuff. Okay. So in, in, in normal way, we have to guess first, like educated guess from your experimental data, and then trying to find the, the, the mathematical expression to explain the mu, the QS, and the QP, and get the mathematical models like what you see here. And what you do next is you want to find the kinetic parameters. And the kinetic parameters, for example, in this term, in, in, in this expression, are those kinetic parameters. And those kinetic parameters each explain the phenomenon that happens to the cells. Okay, like mu max, explain what is the mu max, the actual numbers of mu max, what it is. Okay, and these are all what we call the kinetics parameters. So the kinetics parameters is not only like uh, the yield or the productivity. That that is a very basic kinetics parameter in this case. Okay. So in order to do that, we use software and do programming and do sort of like numerical method or any other ways to determine the, the values of these parameters. And after that, we have to fit it to experimental data. Uh, what I show you here is the, the actual work of the, of the modeling, the dot that you see are the experimental data and the line that you see is from what we call the model simulation. We are finding those values and then plotting the graph. And if the graph fit, that means that there's enough evidence that this kinetic model is correctly um, explained what what happened with the cell, okay? And this is the overview, okay? This is the overview of the, of the uh, cell's kinetics. 